Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Railroad. Today we're going to talk about the Copper Belt Railroad. It was there before they started open cut mining and they used Shea locomotives. So stay tuned. Today we're talking about the Copper Belt Railroad. By the end of its corporate existence, there was five three truck Shays on the property. So if you like Shea locomotives, just check out some of these great pictures we have. Or at Bingham Canyon was discovered in 1863. This was the horse and buggy era. Finding ore in the ground was one thing, but getting it to the smelter was another. So without adequate transportation, the mines at Bingham faltered. The coming of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 and spurs to Salt Lake City, then to Bingham, by way of the Bingham Canyon and Camp Floyd Railroad, that came in 1873, the slumbering mines at Bingham now came alive. By the end of 1874, they had over 4,000 claims that were recorded. With the railroad just stopping short of the town of Bingham, the mines had to find a way to get their oars down to the train. The first was by horse and wagon. Boy, that wasn't very profitable. Can you imagine loading up a wagon and trying to get it down a great big steep hill? And then in 1875, L.F. Holden built a three-foot railway tram from the old Jordan, Galena, and Telegraph mines, five miles to the railroad terminals. The tram was gravity propelled down a 4 to 14% grade with brakes on each of the 3,000-pound car. That's what controlled the speed down, and then horse and mule teams pulled the empty cars back to the mines. Now look at these pictures of these, uh, this railway tram. It was crazy. All I can say is, what a ride. And look at this map. Look at all the claims around here. These were all underground mines. And they had to get their ore down to the trains, and that was down in Frogtown here. Here's some pictures of Frogtown and the big uh, terminals. Eventually they will have the aerial tramways uh, delivered ore down there also. They had four of those in the canyon. We had a video on that. But for right now they're just using this rail tramway. And here's a picture of the, the mountain. You can see all the mine dumps on it. And this is where they'll start the open cut mining is on this mountain. And eventually this mountain will be dug away and become the pit. The Bingham Copper and Gold Mining Company, they build a smelter in the Salt Lake Valley at Bingham Junction, and that will be called Midville later on. And they also wanted to control the transportation from the mine to the smelter. So they purchased and leased the property of this uh, horse tramway. Then on November 1900 until February 1901, they built a new standard gauge railroad on that old tramway grade. And they operated the new type Shea steam locomotives on it. The local press called it the Copper Belt Line and the name stuck. The Denver Rio Grande helped with the building of this line and will eventually purchase it. And then they will extend it to the mines in the other mines in the area and the mines up in Car Fork and Highland Boy area also. The new type Shea locomotives fit well with the steep grades and the many curves running around the mountain to the mines. The grades were 3.7 to 7.4 and the curves was 34 degrees to 40 degrees. Now these clanking gear driven Shea engines were powerful but slow. Four miles an hour. A man could walk faster. So let's look at some of these Shea motors at work on the mine. These two are running up to the commercial mine. See how steep that is right there, wow. Some neat old pictures of the commercial mine. Here's a picture of the mountain. You can see where the commercial mine was. And you see that kind of that route it went to get up to it. You see that red arrow right there. That's where the commercial mine was. Also the Yampa mine up in Carfork 
they contracted with the Copper Belt Railroad to bring their ore down to their smelter. And that was, the smelter was the Yampa smelter, and that was right down in Frogtown. Here's a picture of the Yampa smelter, a few pictures of that. Now, they'll also have an aerial tram come into that a little later on in 1908. But you can see this picture, it has both the aerial tram and the railroad going into that Yampa uh, smelter. Also, the Yampa smelter only lasted from 1904 to 1910, so it wasn't there very long. In 1904, the Utah Copper had the Copper Belt Railroad deliver to their experimental mill, and that was down by Copperton. It was called the Copperton Mill also. They was uh, testing the feasibility of producing low-grade ore for a profit. So here's that test mill they had right next to, it was right next to the Dry Fork Canyon down there. Also, the Boston Consolidated Company had them, had the Copper Belt Railroad deliver their ore down to the trains down in Frogtown. Now remember, there was two companies at this time. There was the Utah Copper and then the Boston Consolidated Copper, and that was on top of the mountain. Now look how they had to come down all these switchbacks and all these steep grades to get down the mountain in Car Fork and bring that ore down. And so they came up with this idea to build this vertical tram, and it just had these tram cars running down and they dumped it in these great big ore bins. And then the Copper Belt Railroad would take it down from here so they didn't have to come down all those steep switchbacks. And look at some of these pictures of the route itself. You can see how close it is to the town of Bingham. It's kind of fun to look at these older pictures of the, the mine in the background and then this Copper Belt Railroad just running along the side of the mountain right here and the Bingham right there the, to the right. Look how steep that mountainside is on that one right there and how close it is to that railway. Here's some more pictures of that route going down the canyon. Now this one, this is, a, you see the, one of the motors on the steam engines on the Copper Belt Railroad going up to Copperfield right here. Well, with the close proximity to the town, they did have wrecks. So we have some pictures of the trains going in the ditch and wrecking right here. This first one was in 1906. And then this was March 21st, 1908. And it ran into the EA Wall Mill. You see this old mill building right here. I actually think it ran into that mill building twice, but I can't find the other picture on it. And then also we had a video on the wrecks and the famous February 15th, 1912, we talked about that a lot. We have some pitch, a lot of pictures of that wreck where it went over and crashed into the building and people lost their lives and look how much damage was done on that. Anyway, so that's the shades on the Copper Belt Railroad at Bingham Canyon.